Hello everyone, welcome back to another exciting logo animation tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to create a TED intro video in After Effects. So without further ado, let's get started. First things first, let's create a new composition and then name it Main Comp. You can see the rest of the settings on the screen. Then click OK. After that, I select the text tool and write TED in the composition. Aligning it to the center. Next, I select the layer, right click, and choose Create Shapes from Text. This will change our text layer into a shape layer. You can then delete the text layer. I'll rename the shape layer as T, E, and D. I then open the layer options and delete the letters except for T, though I have only one letter in each shape layer. I repeat this process until each letter is in its own shape layer. You can also create a logo in Illustrator and then import it into After Effects. Alright, after that, select all the layers and press T on the keyboard to reveal the opacity of these layers. I add a keyframe at the first frame, setting the opacity to 100%. Then, I move the time indicator forward a bit and change the opacity from 100% to 0%. After that, Check the RAM preview. Then select the first and last keyframes and move them forward so that the letter E dissolves first, followed by the other two letters fading out. Next, select all the keyframes and move them forward around 15 frames. After that, select all the layers and pre-compose them. Naming it Text. Click the option Move All Attributes, then click OK. Afterward, click this button. Go to the Layer panel and find Auto Trace. Click on it and it will open a box where you can see the outline of the text. Just set the property values as shown on the screen. Then click OK. After clicking, you'll see a new layer created in our timeline called Auto Trace Text. First, I rename this layer as Red Particle. Then, go to the Effect Control panel and search for the Stroke Effect. Select the stroke effect and drop it on the red particles layer, then click the option All Mask. Next, change the paint style to On Transparent and increase the brush size to around 5%. After that, I select the layer again, go to the Effects panel, and search for the CC Ball Action effect. Select and drop it on the red particles layer. Then, change the grid spacing to 2%, and set the ball size to 100. Make sure your time indicator is at the first frame. Then go to the effects panel and search for CC lens. Select and drop it on the red particles layer. After that, change the convergence to around 6% and set the size to 0% at the first frame. Add a keyframe on the size value, then move the time indicator forward and change the size to around 155%. After that, press U on the keyboard to see the keyframes. You might see some mask keyframes, but they're not useful, so you can delete them. Focus on the keyframes and check the RAM preview. If it looks too fast, select the last keyframe of the size and drag it forward. You can move the time keyframe forward and backward to adjust the speed of the animation. Once you're satisfied with the animation, go to the CC Ball Action effect and make sure your time indicator is at the first frame. Then, click on the Scatter Stopwatch to add a keyframe. Move the time indicator forward about 16 frames, then change the scatter value to around 1.5%. Move the time indicator forward a bit more, around 5 seconds, and increase the scatter value. After that, select these keyframes and apply Easy Ease. Then, go to the Graph Editor, select the handle, and move it to create the desired curve. Check the RAM preview. Alright, now click this icon to turn the shape into a 3D layer. Press P on the keyboard to reveal the position properties of this layer, and add a keyframe. Move the time indicator forward about 5 seconds 
and change the Z value so that the particles move out of the frame. Check the RAM preview. Then select the keyframes and apply Easy Ease. If it's still too fast, adjust the keyframes. After that, select these keyframes, then go to the graph editor, select the handle, and move it to create the desired curve. Check the RAM preview. After that, select the red particles layer and go to the effects panel. Search for the four color gradient effect, then drop it on the layer. Change the colors to shades of red. As I'm doing here. And adjust the color points accordingly. Now you can see our particles have changed to red. Turn on the text layer and drag the red particles layer forward a bit on the timeline to match the fade-out animation of the text. Alright, now double-click on the Shape Builder tool to create a rectangle. This rectangle will become our background. So rename this layer as Background, change the color to white, and place it below all the layers. After that, check the RAM preview, and drag the time indicator to the point where the transition starts. Open the rectangle properties, and under Fill, you'll find Color. Click on the Color stopwatch to add a keyframe, then move the time indicator slightly and change the color from white to black. To create a smooth transition animation. I forgot to remove the stroke from the background layer, so I'll change the stroke value to 0%. All right, once again, select the red particles layer and duplicate it. Rename the duplicate layer as white particles. Then place it below the red particles layer. Select the white particles layer and change the gradient colors from red to white or shades of white. Drag the white particles layer slightly forward on the timeline and check the RAM preview. That's looking good. Then, once again, select the red particles layer and duplicate it one more time. This time, rename the layer as Red Particles Spark. Then press U on the keyboard to reveal all the keyframes of this layer. Go to the Effects panel and add a keyframe on the ball side. Move the time indicator further forward then change the ball size to 0%. Move the time indicator to where the second scatter keyframe is and change the scatter value to around 19.6%. Check the RAM preview. After that, select all the particles layers, go to the effects panel, and search for the glow effect. Drop the glow effect one by one on each particle layer. Then, create a new adjustment layer and drop the glow effect on it as well. Change the glow threshold value to 62% and the glow radius to around 44%. Move the time indicator back to where the particles start to spread, then press T on the keyboard to reveal the opacity of this layer. Click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe. Then move the time indicator back a bit and change the opacity from 100% to 0%. Finally, select all the particles layers and enable motion blur for them. Check the final RAM preview. So that's how you can create a